Hey there, gents and gamblers. Welcome back. It's Chris from Good Roads. In this video, we're continuing on our journey to build a real snowboard. In the last video, we made our core blank. And in this video, we're gonna make the second component of our board, our base sheet. Now I mentioned this briefly in the previous video, a base sheet doesn't seem like it would be that important, but unlike a skateboard or a powder surfer, the final shaping of a snowboard is done by using those metal edges that run around the outside of the board as a router template. So getting the shape of those edges is crucial because they are your template, and the shape of the edges is based on the shape of the base sheet. So we're gonna put a lot of care into getting this part right, and that means not freehanding it. We're gonna start this process by making a template. I'm gonna be building mine out of plywood, but you can make it out of MDF, you can make it out of any stable material. You probably wouldn't wanna make it out of, for example, a pine board, because some humidity could get in there and warp it, twist it, cup it. These are all not things that are gonna be helpful when we want to get a really accurate shape. So I've printed out the shape of my board, and I'm gonna tack it down to the material for my template. Then I'm going to carefully go in with a pencil and trace that shape around my paper onto my template. The next thing I'm going to do is rough cut my template. And I do mean rough. I'm trying to leave somewhere between an eighth and quarter of an inch outside of my line and material. You can get a pretty accurate cut with a bandsaw, but you always want to allow for the possibility that it might wander, it might catch on something, and if the bandsaw moves or you move in a way that is unexpected, you're going to end up with a little bit of a ripple there in your template. So we're going to cut wide and then we're going to refine the shape later. And by later, I mean right now. After the bandsaw, I'm gonna take my template, move over to my belt sander slash oscillating spindle sander and remove that excess material, move the edge of my template all the way up to that line. Now we could work straight from there, it's in a pretty good shape, but I really want to get this right, so I'm going to spend a little bit extra care making sure things are perfect. The first thing that I noticed was that the side cut radiuses had some imperfections to it. It might be because of the shape of the platen on the belt sander, it might be because my template was a little wavy, it might be because my tracing of the template was a little wavy, could have been affected by the grain of the wood, right? So what I decided to do was to grab a hand sanding block and try my best to smooth out those curves. And I don't mean making the surface of the curve smooth, I mean making the transition of the curve smooth so that it feels like one continuous curve. Once that was feeling good to the hands, I spent a little bit of extra time cleaning up some curves in the nose and tail, just getting all my little details perfect. But once that was done and I was satisfied, our router template is finished. And by the way, that's what kind of template this is. This is a template that we're gonna use a flush cut router so that we can get a really precise shape. And it also gives us the advantage that if we like this shape, we can make the same shape over and over again. But at this point, I feel pretty confident. I know that as best as possible, the shape that I designed is reflected in my template. I know that all the curves in the template are nice and smooth and gradual, and especially those side cuts are gonna be behaving the way that I want them to. So I think we're ready to actually start cutting the base. The first thing I did was to roll out some of my base material. I'm using our old friend, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. In some places goes by the brand name Ptex. I'm just gonna drop the template that we made down on top of it and cut it to length. 
Once my base material is cut to length, I dropped some weight on the template so it wouldn't shift around. I'm using a Sharpie to trace that template onto the base material. And once our template is traced, we're just gonna bring it over to the bandsaw and rough cut out our base material. The next part's really fun, uh, except for the part where Radars and I don't get along at all, ever. We're gonna take our base sheet material and sit it on top of our template and then use quick release clamps, or like alligator clamps, around the edges to make sure it holds in place. I'm gonna take a router with a flush cut bit and we are going to use that template to shave off all of the excess material that we left around the edges of our base material. I've seen people do this process before and I was expecting the routing and the moving of the clamps and getting everything right to be this big crazy process, kind of like a layup where the, oh my God, there's so much going on. It was actually really fun and pretty straightforward and not confusing at all. I think what made it work really easily for me was to just make sure that there were enough clamps. I did not have to worry about my base sheet sliding or skidding around because I had plenty of clamps to hold it in place. And outside of that, I just went slow and took my time and it worked really well. Once you've done one side, leave some of the clamps in place, flip your template and base sheet around, add the clamps back in, do the other side, and then the shaping of your base sheet is done. Now before the layup, you want to make sure that that bonding surface, the sanded and flame treated surface, is immaculate. At this point in the process, it doesn't matter as much, but just for the sake of keeping things tidy, I went in with some acetone and cleaned up my base sheet both sides. And here it is. We've got our sheet of Umpy or Ptex. It's got super clean edges that follow the shapes of our router template perfectly. And because we spent so much time working on that template, we can guarantee that this base sheet is as close to the board that we designed as possible. To get any more precise than this, we would have to start using CNC's basically. So there we go. Board part number two is squared away and finished. There is still a lot of components left to go, and a lot of those components, just like this needed a template, a lot of the other steps in the snowboard building process are also gonna require that we make some tooling to go along with it. The next piece that I'm thinking about addressing is the sidewalls. And I would like to do a poured urethane sidewall. And from what I understand, they are pretty tricky. So I think what I'm gonna do before I try to pour sidewalls on the core that we built and potentially ruin it is I'm gonna take some time to do some experiments about different techniques and how we can best get those materials to bond together. So that's gonna be the next video. If you like the content and you're not subscribed, why don't you give us a sub? It's one of the ways you can show me that you like what I'm doing. It makes me happy. If you got any comments or questions, leave them down below. I do my best to answer and to reply to as many of them as possible, as many of them make sense. We're gonna be moving right through this board build. So I hope you like it. I hope you're enjoying the videos and coming along with me for the journey. I like having you here. And with that, it's back into the shop and on to the next component. Thanks as always for stopping by and I'll see you soon. <laughs> Ooh.